I know that I exist. I know my compound is not scarred by oblivious theoretics, knowing my interior skill to be a river which breathes, which conducts its respiration beyond a mortal confinement, beyond the substance of dogs or eels, so that one begins nascent accumulation in the realm not applicable to the neural, which seems to condone telepathy as dirt. Accumulation which cannot condemn rarity or just its means to malefically inspired fixity. There are days when I never ask if I exist, if I'm never reflected in bright and phlogiston carvings or curved pavilions of glass. What I say to myself concerns the ubiquitous, the simultaneous with fast interior instinct for the pelagic. In truth, be it liminal to Africa or to the Bay of Bengal, always subject to the non-arithmetic, to archery non-didactic as to scope or adventure. I am not the gamma involved in brutish national acclaim for a ginger or clothes or camphor. This is why nations are ended, why Portugal has blackly dissolved into nullity. Do I consider myself some penultimate apparition, being the last to witness the ox of meridians? The last to understand illusory deprecation magnetized by winds in tropical totality? Not that I attach any right to such self-interrogation or seek to foment prestige depicted as action by definite outward authority. I now no longer inflame myself with singular diagnosis, with boldness sought by inflammatory dicta. I remain indifferent to cold arterial pallor, to describing myself by numerical hurricane ballets equated with the sun beneath a subhuman species. Of course, I understand the precipitous, the sudden drone as incline, as quickening the abyss lit by imbalance. I understand the volcanic, the inclusionary, the lake derived from a vicious source or absolute. I experience the matric, the cleanse the thana at its core, lighting a bonfire of things on my boat. For me, a storm, a chrysalis in movement, an ingestive dictation, luminous, enthralling me with the power of darkened specification of specific cyanide and conundrums. And for days now, it has occurred to me that Giannini has ceased to appear, has ceased to bring to the fore a flank of slain, a drop a day. So what I ask of myself is movement, is the potent circulation of risk, of taking in my hands quickened lightning by tragedy, a no instant by instant by various greenness, by non sequiturs with a two by means of nitrogen and honey. When it came to Egyptian nautical development, I partake of aboriginal explorational intent, absorbing blank indelibles from the sea, only to be ingest its mystery into dust, so that they quicken as cormorants, as great seductors of mirages, so that they waywardly blend into a single avian without name, never once condemned by a wretched moral cinema, as if their descent were intensified as quantum persona, like a musically conducted soul of water. As my trawler, as my glacial timber arc can never negate the lantern reed, or a triangular sail set obliquely on short mast. Yes, I've cut planks with badges, used lashings of rope evolved from aggregate vegetable fibers, describing my boat with its boom, with its centerboard trunk, its jib, its shroud, its fable mooring cleat. Yet when a vis vessel is virtual, it appears and disappears, and so at times I am Egyptian or Phoenician, voyaging around phantasmal projections of Crete, again being Phoenician, sailing off Cornwall in the mining of tin. Yet I have swayed from Theraveda, dominant in Sri Lanka. Afro-Tibetan in the sense that I have absorbed the essence of Mahayana, and a haze of links connected by samsara. So some could say my voyage is dukkha, is a cycle of privation, 
and the cycle of privation is in the complex doctrine of dependent origination. Now I know that I have practiced sila, and that I concentrate, and that I open and close hurricanes with my fingers. And by practicing pana, it has given me the wisdom to kill, to mass behead, hydrophide. Yet I feel I have risen by right views, by seminal intent, by perfected speech, in carnivorous conduct, a livelihood confident and defectible as mindfulness expanded to samadhi. But perhaps I'm not the immaculate Buddhist, the urn who lives to disrecognize, the, to transmute the arc of the tomb, wandering, perfecting the sense of cellular consociation. And that communion is horrific, is a magnetic scintilla, clandestine with origin at the archetype of essence of innocence which unveils universe after universe, quenching in my personal geologistic desire for an opted harassment of steepened alchemical ionics. No, not a vertigo of insensation, not a vertigo corrupted by loosened chemical diamond or privy to the efflux of some nurse sharp. One could say that I'm greenish with jeopardy, with synergistic disdain, balanced by moral craters. Today, the sun, a dusky spherical blizzard, a solemn stationary ash, as to personal defeat or horizon, nothing exists. Nothing carries an evictor for action. Perhaps I am a castaway, specifically listed in a diary of non-location. A tense comedic phantom who, for four days, four previous five gulls, has written for himself twelve squalls, three intermittent rainbows with an angular lava writhing on days when I suffer from pains of the immeasurable from a glossary condensed with dominant pre-indicatives, as if to mimic myself with recitals of uncertainty, always paralleled by a code of dark and carnadine forms reacting as inherence. Not that I think it is Giannini attempting to haunt me, to invade my astral formation, to coax from my utterance the north of a weaving diode. I've spoken to him as a beacon, as a hunter for a drop of day in the void, who's left their beheaded remains, who's left threats in ventriloquial subsoma, messages whose life is complex germination wrought with momentous disfigurement. Perhaps a desire for prolixity is carnivorous exercise in self grafting attempting capacity as a higher breathing body as a sigil become ocular poverty, whirling like a photopic fire by means of quixotic, ophthalmic, judgmental. As if success could succeed by a cold, solely solidified by ravens, by mist which wafts through multiple dragon's orchids, or by the osmology from a compound trigger fish. As if Giannani hovered this side of primordial evanescence, giving to me signals poised upon connivance. The same could be said of a bibliography of gannets finding themselves alive through mystical angularity, through nervous behavioral foundation. At present, you could say I suffer from a self-induced avalanche condition into a quandary of neurons. Perhaps I'm scattered self-description, that I'm a monoron deflected from penetrant volition concerning conical grains or a staircase constructed from a bluish idiogracia, which pertains to magical electrics, to ballistical unreasoning. You see, I am diametrical to cameo. My policy never portends havens inducted between alluvium and journey, between the journey of a scarab and his sojourn to Heliopolis, I do not face narcoma, nor do I bait my time with any clinical clairvoyance. A clairvoyance delimited, profane, darkly abstract across its findings. I can only evince the electrical momentum of the stray, a momentum which fleetingly cross beads with oceanic arcana, with a tumbled feeding oasis, spun in accordance with strange pollutional vibration. Thank you.